love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm funded play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror and be is no friend of me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so I can make a better me better believe in your mind cause it's everything you can mold shape find
I want to point out. See this molding here? I'm gonna pop a stable there, in the line, in the line, in the line, in the line, maybe every, every, every two so that we don't see too many indentations. We wanna get right in the middle of that to reverse cord around or just a scooped cord around to watch. On that angle, then we'll go here to this line, same angle. Move to this line, same angle, in that groove. I know you can't see it, but you can see if you keep the stable gun the same way. Here we go. Into the groove. Into the groove. Into the groove. Now we'll flip the stable gun around on the back side. Into the groove. Now look at under here. It looks even all the way along. You don't see a staple here and then here and then here and then here. Consistent all the way along makes your stairs look great. Okay, another one. See at the front here, we're four and a quarter. It started off at four and a half and we're walking. So to straighten this back out, we've got to angle the back. So we take our kicker and we angle it the way that we want to turn it. So now we're close to four and a half. I'm going to do a little bit more of a turn. Old stairs, 100 year old house. Okay, we almost have it. I'm going to just lock it in. Now sometimes you can't course correct exactly but what we want to do is if the stairs are crooked we want to twist out we're almost we're almost in line we're four and a half so then we want to course correct back up here four and a half four and a half all the way up hundred year old stairs must course correct so that means that this side will have to come back a little bit and there may be a gap or an air bubble on the front, but that's okay. All right, these are 100 year old stairs. We want a course correct. So we'll just tighten them up all the way along and then lock our sides in. And then when we move up to the next stair, we'll course correct again, if need be. Now let's check our course correction here. Now let's see where we are. Now this carpet is naturally just gonna sit where it wants to sit, going up the next stair. Let's measure. We are actually right on at four and a half, so we're pretty good. We wanna pre-bend our nose. It's cold these days, so uh, carpet is, reacts to the cold. Now here we go again. We've got the uh, reverse quarter round. We wanna make sure that we're gonna get these stables in even. So even if you see an indentation, they're even all the way along, not one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so watch, here we go. I'm gonna start in the middle to keep the course correction straight. I'm just gonna put one right in the middle and work my way back. Same area. Okay, we'll do it over here. Now let's have a look. Pretty good all the way along. Okay, little off here, but you can't really tell because I didn't put too many. Okay, we'll do it on the next one again. Let's double check on the back end for course correction. We're starting to go off a little bit, which means we'll start running up at an angle. So we're gonna course correct by moving our kicker over here and just twisting back a little bit. We're gonna check it again, a little too much. Come to the middle. Push straight. Pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna just angle it this way, lock this in. Over the other side, I'm gonna lock that in. Three stables, good enough. More if you want. Whatever the carpet really uh, tells you. Gonna break the back a little bit. Seems to be lots of tension on the 45. Every two inches, grab the hammer, tucker. On the 45 degree angle, nice indentation. Now we're working our way up, we're moving up. We're gonna check our uh, 
our measurements. Look at that. We're twisting a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna twist back and we're almost on. Let's do under the nose again. 100 year old stairs, course correction, every stair. So here we're gonna pre-bend. Let's start on the outside here. We're gonna try get our stable gun into the groove. We go on the lines to kind of hide it. On the 45 degree angle, all the way along, maybe every two inches. So you don't see that many, and it looks nice along there. If you see a little bubble, you can put a little uh, staple in. That's because we're course correcting, so we're twisting and we're turning, and we're twisting and we're turning. So there might be bubbles in the bottom. That's how we course correct. Moving our way up to the next stair. Let's see where we are. We're supposed to be four and a half. Pretty good, man. Can't, uh, can't be too bad with four and a half. So since we're four and a half, we'll put some pressure on the kicker in the middle. We're gonna check it while we have pressure. Rob, get a feature here on the side. See my knee, I've got my thigh on here. I've got pressure on the kicker. I've got my tape measure in one hand. I'm just leaning on this carpet like this. Just gonna check that there. We're at four and a half basically, a little bit over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that in, put pressure here and push this back over here, locked side in. That will get me back kind of where I want to go, four and a half. We've got to meet with that landing up there. Same thing on this side, a little tension. Now we're going to score that stair again. Now you guys can turn off and skip to the landing, but maybe you should be watching this to learn how to course correct this every stair. Pretty important. Get it locked in your brain. Stapled every two inch. Now we're going to use our carpet tucker, our stair tool, and our hammer. Get a nice groove. You can go over that as many times as you want. Okay, ready for the next one. Pull back, squeeze, bend. Then we're going to check our, uh, our measurement. Four and a half. We're good. We got the same thing. Now you guys with this quarter round underneath. You can take this quarter round out, guys, and then at least you got a perfect square in there. Otherwise, if you don't, this is how you do it. Angle. Same spot. You can go, like I said, every line. Mm, we should probably go every two. Less on this quarter round is more. Right, one at the end. Then it looks even all the way along, and as you go up and you start to be able to see under here, this looks nice. Let's get some staples. Now, you guys are always asking me what kind of staples I'm using. These are 9 16 crown staples. Okay, up, over, and down. 9 16 The staple gun we're using is a Roberts electric staple gun. You can find these links in the description below. Uh, it is to uh, our uh, Amazon uh, affiliate account. If you do buy from there, we do get a little commission. Okay, we're going to check our course correction here. See how we're doing. Four and a half. Pretty good. We're going to get tension on our kicker. Let's do the middle first. Put your thigh, kicker, tension, tape measure. Four and a half. Fantastic. Let's lock it in. One, two, three. Okay, between the carpet and the binding. Now we'll do the other side. A little tension again. One, two, three. A little bubble. I'm gonna do four. Put more staples where you need. Now we'll score with our carpet tucker or our carpet tool. As many times as you want. 45 degree angle every two inches, put a staple. Tucker, hammer. Nice groove, nice and professional. Okay, we're getting close. Working our way up. We're gonna pre-bend. Why do we pre-bend? Makes it easier under the nose. Now, we got the same thing. We're gonna do those angles, right? But let's check our course correction. Let's see where we're sitting. We gotta meet that landing. At four and a half, so, so you can see we're, we're a little over. 
So not gonna be that big of a deal. But when we're over, I'm gonna start on this side and work that way. Okay, and so what I do sometimes, as you can see, I put my finger behind here. Okay, if I just go there, you can see, if you guys had a good camera, you'd see that this is a little bit angled. If I pull this out and I bend this down and I leave that gap, remember these stairs have settled for 100 years. Now I lock this in, this will be straight all the way across, but we'll have to deal with this bubble. I'll show you how to deal with that. Let's get under there and just lock that in. Yes, I use more staples, but I have to deal with this bubble. We'll deal with that bubble after. Now let's go right across the whole thing now. Now that's locked in on that side, you can do this. Let's get a good camera angle. Ready, on the end, every two inches on the 45 degree. Okay, nice, looks good. Now, remember this bubble, we gotta deal with this bubble. So all you're gonna do is split the pile with your staple gun and you're gonna start in where the bubble starts. Split the pile. Split the pile, split the pile. Look at that, we're bringing the bubble out. Let's split that pile again, okay? And wherever that you think that you see needs to be pushed down, push down and then take your hammer and then bang in those staple marks, okay? So what we did was this stair is 100 years old and it's a little twisted, so it's making the stair runner run up on an angle and we got a course correct. So how do we do that sometimes if it's extreme? We stick our finger back behind, we pull this carpet straight, and then we pop staples in and then we lock this in after. It's just easier than cutting it down and lining it all up, especially with a linear pattern. Moving on up. We're gonna check our course correction. Rob, show this here. Guys, we have to come up here and we gotta meet with our landing. So we wanna make sure our landing bottom is at around four and a half, four and you know, five eighths. We're close. Once we get to this level, as long as we're at four and a half, we can course correct an eighth of an inch. Not a big deal. But let's get let's get there. Four and a half, we're good. So let's lock it in on that side. Got pressure, Rob got pressure thigh leaning not kicking leaning lots of pressure you don't want it loose it's supposed to be tight staples one two three lock it down now we're going to do the same thing on the other side pressure now you're going to have see this always falling yeah it's going to happen you're going to have to deal with it okay pressure staple 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 now we're good now you can take your kicker or you could have done this before with something else. Just gonna put it up there to hold that in place while we uh, while we score this and lock this in before we get to that finish on that runner. Don't worry about that sound. We're really kind of breaking the backing. It has to be done. Okay. Hammer tucker. Second verse, same as the first. Now, let's see where we are here. Rob, you want, can you get that? How's that look there? Look at that, guys. We're almost right on, okay? Because we course corrected all the way up every stair. Every stair we course corrected, right? That's why we're on there. So we started at the bottom and we moved it every, we checked it every stair. And that's why we end up with being right on right there. Okay, so let's uh, let's get the last bits of staples in the bottom on that angle again. Right, ready? Here we go, on the 45, we'll go every line or every other line with this stuff on the 45 degree angle. And then one on the end for good measure. And if you feel that you've missed one, I feel that th that one needs another one right there. I'm gonna put it in there. But look at how nice that looks. Okay, moving up. Now, good blade, sharp blade. We gotta match one to one. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now for beginners, it's not that easy. If you feel that this is too much for you, you can always do this piece separate. So if you have an extra piece, you can always cut it here 
and then fit it after. I'm gonna show you how to do it exact, okay? So what we're gonna do is we know that we're on there. I've got extra, I wanna get rid of it. I need about an inch. Be careful when you cut through and not to cut through through. See, I've got a little bit up in the air. I'm gonna cut from side to side so I don't rip my binding. Okay, get rid of that piece. Now I've got a small piece to deal with. Now I've gotta line it up here. This is important. So I'm gonna kick it, line it up, and then I'm gonna, I'm good over my other side because it's all made, right? When we make a, a stair runner for you at directcarpet.com, see how these lines are coming down the exact pattern? Well, guess what? The landing is coming down the exact pattern as well. Very important. Okay, let's do this. So I don't have to measure for course correction. All I need to do is make sure that I am on with this here, there. I'm gonna check my other side to make sure I'm on there. Looks good. Put some pressure on. Let's get this lined up perfect. Needs a little bit of an angle, but that looks pretty good. Let's do that. That looks good. Lock it in. Two and three. Now we're gonna lock it in on the other side. Angle one, two, and three. Rob, show the, show the direction of, this, of the kicker here. I've got pressure pushing out because I wanted to match my other side here. It's pressure, which takes, gives my hands free, right? I've got pressure here, my hands are free. So I can use my tape measure if I need to. I can use my stable gun. Uh, no, look, Ma, no hands, okay? Pressure off. Now, let's groove that into position because this is super important. If you mess this cut up, you will not be happy. So the best way to do this is to super score that until that thing wants to sit perfectly in a 90 degree position. Okay, before I staple it, We don't want that. So let's pull that up and we're gonna put some pressure on a kicker. And listen, you've gotta cut this with your knife, okay? See, what you don't wanna do is put staples where you're gonna cut. So when I do this, instead of doing it on 45, I'm gonna shallow up as high as I can on an angle and try to staple back into like this position, this position before my cut. See, my cut's gonna be there right? I want to try to put a staple before my cut because if you hit the staple with your knife, it's going to dull your blade and it doesn't make for a great cut. So let's try this. Okay. Let's put some pressure, get it tight. Staple down, staple down, staple down. Okay. Move the kicker again. Staple down, staple down, staple down and one on the end for good measure. Done. Okay. So there's no coming back from this. Look at it. Nice and tight. Now, let's make it tighter. Bang those staples in on the 45. Okay, again. Okay. Now, once you figure that you have that in the most perfect 90 that you can possibly get, make sure that you put a brand new, excellent, sharp, sharp blade on here. We're gonna cut from the left to the center and from the right, or sorry, from the right to the center and the left to the center. You can do it whatever way you want, but we wanna cut through the binding this way, not through the binding that way, because it tears the binding. Now, we also don't wanna cut the binding behind. So instead of cutting on a 45 degree angle like this, we're gonna cut more on a flat, almost flat, all the way through. So we get a little bit extra to tuck back in. Ready, here we go. Okay, do the reveal. Now we're gonna do this side. Okay, let's see how we did. We're gonna get rid of that. Let's get our fluff out of here. Now this cut's not for the faint of heart. Okay, let's take our tucker and our hammer and bang that in and see how we did.
Okay, it looks pretty good. So what I wanna see from you guys, if you need more staples, put more staples. Pattern lines up, nice and tight. Can't tell what's going on. We're gonna do a dab of glue there, a little dab of glue there. Now listen, if you have problems with this, um, you can always do this riser piece separate. If you were to line this up at four and a half here, four and a half inches, and make sure that this is lined up at four and a half, then you can just, you know, measure, let's say it's six inches from here to here and cut this riser separate and then fit that in so you don't have to do this crazy cut here. Now, I did the crazy cut because that's how I do it, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys the option. Now we're gonna work our way around to the other set of stairs. Feel free to leave uh, questions and comments in the uh, section below. I'm, uh, I answer all those questions. If you need a, if you need a stair runner, uh, go to directcarver.com and uh, if you need something custom, hit the chat and uh, we'll take care of that for you. I'm Keith Shannon with directcarver.com. Thanks for watching.